Welcome to the Faith Assembly live stream. Our goal here at Faith is to help you connect, grow, and go. We want to help you connect to active faith, grow in that faith by providing opportunities to do so, and then to go and live out the Great Commission. Our prayer is that as you join us in this time of worship and studying the Word, that you will be encouraged and you too would connect, grow, and go. Thanks for joining us and we hope you enjoy the service.
Welcome to Faith Assembly. Thanks for joining us. If you're a first time guest, we want to ask you to grab a connection card from the seat in front of you. If you will fill that out front and back and take it to our guest connections table, we have a gift for you. Welcome home. Hey Faith Women, I'm so excited to invite you to our growth groups. They will kick off the last week in January. This time we're providing lots of opportunities for you to find a place to connect and join in on this amazing Bible study. We'll be doing Kingdom Woman by Dr. Tony Evans and his daughter Crystal Evans Hurst. This is an amazing study. Some opportunities to join in are on Monday nights at 6.30 with Beth Buck in her home. Also, Tamara McKeel and Tammy Fulcher will be hosting at Tammy's house on Thursday nights. Nicole Franklin will be hosting the study on Sunday mornings right here at Faith Assembly in room 108. And also, Novella May will be hosting in the mornings at 10 a.m. on Thursday. Ladies, lots of opportunities for you to find a place that you can be here and be part of this study. Books are available. You can see me. I have books on hand. You can purchase those books directly for $12 a piece. I hope that you'll make time to be part of this study. It's embracing our purpose, our power, and our possibilities. I'm looking forward to seeing each of you there. Hey Faith Fam, if you're interested in becoming a member here at Faith Assembly, there will be Next Step classes beginning on Sunday, February 3rd at 9.30 a.m. in the conference room. Hey Faith Family, we are launching a brand new approach to our Wednesday evening midweek services. We are launching on January 30th at 7 p.m. what we're calling Family Night. We are offering something strategically for the entire family to come together and grow in the things of the Lord. We have adult Bible study in room 105 and 107 in our main building. And we're gonna be launching a brand new series of studies on January 30th that is entitled, You Make Me Crazy. It's all about relationships. It's not just for married couples, but it's for anybody that walks in relationship with other people. We wanna give you a godly perspective on those relationships. We've got awesome ministries for the, for the small kids, beginning with the Rainbows Club and graduating from there to Impact Girls and Royal Rangers, just an exciting time for the younger kids. We're also launching a brand new Bible study for the middle and high school students as well. And it all starts January 30th, 7 p.m. I challenge you to set aside one hour for your family during the week. Hey, Faith Man, I'm excited to let you know that our oyster roast is right around the corner. Mark your calendars, February 28th at 6.30. For $25, we're gonna have chicken, we're gonna have shrimp, and of course, oysters. You can register online at faith-assembly.org, and I'm gonna let you know in the next couple weeks more details about this event. Hope to see you there. If you're new here at Faith Assembly, we wanted to invite you out to Pizza with the Pastors on Sunday, January 27th, immediately following the service. This is where you can get to know the pastors and learn more about life here at Faith.
darkness is trembling, we will declare that you are the light of the world. Our hands are lifted, our voices shouting, we will declare. things that you do for us, Lord. You're a good, good Father. Yes, we worship you. The one who made the blind to see is moving here.
so focused on our sickness and our healing that we forget to focus on the one who gives the healing. So just close your eyes and give it all to God this morning. I believe in you. I believe in your healing power. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God
same God, the same God that works the miracles that we read about in the Bible from so long ago, the same God that healed the blind man, the same God that caused the lame to walk, he is the same God, and he is still working miracles today, he didn't stop working miracles then, you know he still wants to do a miracle. Your glory, God, is what 
more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your this morning and what's tied in my sermon is about promises and blessings and my devotion this morning was talking about if we never received another blessing from God that one day was enough we can never outpay that for what he did that one day for us you know and how we're supposed to live our life and move forward and show the blessings to everyone and how we're blessed so menacely from just giving and putting it in motion you know there was one part in here that said you know live your faith out every day and watch what happens so you'll never outgive God your blessings are going to fall and fall because it said in that thing it said if and then the if was capitalized if we didn't receive no blessings. But he's got abundance for us. So I want you to think about that this morning as we get ready to take our tithes and offering. Lord, we just thank you for what you do in our lives each and every day, the blessings you continue to pour upon us, Lord. Lord, as we give this morning, Lord, that it be shaken and turned around all which ways to bless this community, Lord, that we're able to reach out for what you do for our people here, Lord. And we just ask this and bless it in your name. Amen. As you guys worship with your giving, let's just continue in this atmosphere of worship. Amen. We're going to sing this song a couple more times. And I just, from your heart, as you give monetarily, give from your heart to God too.
Baba Lord by us. But he's so great in giving when we need. He just delivers. You know, like what miracles we've seen over the past two weeks, three weeks, how God's moving in this church. You know, that's a blessing. So, you know, just hey, this worship team, a lot of them, y'all know, are under the weather. They had to come in this morning and kind of rework some things. They're a blessing. Give it to our worship team. So. But Pastor Steve's out of town. Y'all have a seat. Pastor um, Steve's out of town. Um, Continue to keep them in your prayers as they're headed home tonight. Um, they'll be coming in late. So, um, but when he comes to me about preaching today, he gave me one word, and it was obstacles. And I said, okay, so what can I go with that? You know, we're talking about moving forward, you know, moving forward this year. So I'm going to talk to you this morning about grapes instead of giants. And you can take that giants and mark it off and put obstacles, whichever you feel kind of goes to you. You know, I love to hear success stories of people who have overcame the obstacles in their journey in life to help them succeed. How they overcame everything that was thrown at them and they still succeeded. One of my favorite um, success stories is of a young man who overcame poverty, denial. He was picked on. He was fired from different jobs at early ages because he said that he wasn't business-minded. I'm talking about like eight years old. His father worked for a newspaper company, so he got a little route to deliver newspapers. But he wouldn't deliver them because he was too interested in reading them. So they would fire him and said, you're not doing your job. You're not business-minded. So after that, he went and got a job working on a train, giving it, selling candy. But he got fired on that because when it came Friday, he didn't have no money because he ate all the candy. <laughs> you know, things like that. He said he wasn't business-minded. So here come World War I. He lied about his age to join the Army. He wanted to serve his country, but he was rejected. So he joined the Red Cross, lying about his age again, because he was not 18. So they accepted him. By the time he got to France, the war was just about over because he got sick during the great flu epidemic. So he would draw little things on the ambulances, make a little extra money. He would write little cartoons and stuff on the soldiers' letters to go home. He was constantly doing cartoons and things like that nature. Sending them to publishing houses. They'd say, no, you're not funny, you're not good enough, it's not creative. So he comes back home. He wants to be a writer for the newspaper. He writes a couple of stories. They said, ah, this isn't for you. So they put him back somewhere else in the newspaper. They end up having to lay him off. So he packs up, he moves across country. Still not able to find any work. So him and his brother start a company, and they start doing some things, starting to get a little bit of money coming in. So he does two cartoons, they fail. His third one takes off. It takes over Alex the Cat, I believe it was, as the number one cartoon. So they start doing some movies, and the business is growing. So he decides to do an animated movie. The movie critics hear about it. Oh, it's going to be a failure. That's going to be your doom. You're going to be bankrupt. His wife and brother are pleading with him. Hey, do the, don't, you know, stay away from this. We got a good thing going. But he keeps going forward. So in 1934, he released Snow White. It made $8 million that year. That's equivalent of $134 million today. See, he did not let the naysayers in his life keep him from his grapes. He did not let the giants stop him from moving forward. See, we all have giants no matter what our size or our strengths. I have them. You have them. But how do you face them? Do you go head on or do you be like, 
I'll wait another day. I'll wait another day. I don't listen to this corner for a minute, but I can be a procrastinator sometimes. I love putting things off. Except for when it's something major. I guess I learned that from my grandfather. When we go do a job, we always did the biggest thing first. So everything else seemed easy afterwards. So we kind of saw our fruits from our work a lot faster. You're probably thinking, okay, so this morning we're going to be talking about David and Goliath because it said something about giants, right? But actually we're going to go to Numbers 13 and 14. I'm going to skip through the lines because it's really long, and I know y'all want to get out halfway decent time. But the Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving you to the Israelites. From each tribe send one of its leaders. So at the Lord's command, Moses sent them out into the desert of Paran. All of them were leaders of the Israelites. So they explored the land from the desert of Zin as far as Rehob towards Hamath, and they reached the valley of Eshcol. That they cut a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them, along with some pomegranates and figs. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here it is fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. And all the people we saw there are of great size. That night, the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the whole assembly said to them, if only we had died in Egypt or in the wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua and Caleb were among those who explored the land, tore their clothes and said, The entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored, is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. And the whole assembly talked about stoning them. See, there's two points here. Our first point is Caleb and Joshua saw the grapes instead of the giants. But before they got the grapes... They had to go look for them. And our second point is going to be Caleb and Joshua did not let fear determine their future. See, we can leave here after today's service all fired up, and just as soon as we have to go out and face our giants, we'll make some excuses. We're ready to give up just because of a little hump before we left the church parking lot because someone didn't shake our hand or smile at us or say something to us or something I may have said, we let a little bit of grain of doubt get set in. So we're going to talk about a few ways to overcome our giants this morning. So our first one, Caleb and Joshua saw the grapes instead of the giants. So before we go any further, we have to understand Before they got the grapes, they had to look for them. See, they had been on a long journey. A lot of us. Woo! That would have been bad. They had been on a long journey throughout this time. They saw promises. They knew there was a promise out there. 
but they had to look for it. They had been through obstacles. We've all had obstacles, right? Everyone's had obstacles in here in their life, right? They had to go out and spy the land. But see, the main reason we don't see our grapes is because we're looking in the wrong places. We don't confront our giants. We're not willing to let go of what's in our hand and receive what's in his hand. See, when Caleb and Joshua came back, they came back with a promise bigger than any of us could ever dream of. See, all the other um, spies, all they saw were the giants. They couldn't get past the giants. They couldn't see the promise on the other side. But see, they brought back a cluster of grapes so big they had to put them on a pole and bring them in. So I'm thinking if somebody's bringing some food in on a pole, it's going to be a pig. Can you imagine grapes that size coming in? See, they did not come back with just that little promise. They came back with the Mac Daddy, the game changer. They came back with a promise that was going to transform their lives forever. So let me tell you something, church. The promise God has for you is bigger than you can ever dream of. It's not like, Tanya, I promise you, I'll have the house clean when you get home. No, it's a promise. It's, when you get home, I've got your beachfront house ready for you. That's the kind of promise that God has for you. See, it's that everlasting love no matter what we've done. He's always going to be there for us. You know, the Word of God allows us to see incredible promises of God instead of the giants that stand at our doorsteps. But it's our perspective of how we see ourselves and our surrounding that's so important. How you see yourself. Why? Because it can change your attitude. It can make your attitude stink. If we're not surrounding ourselves with the right people and the right surroundings. See, just like the Israelites, the other spies had a bad attitude. They had fear, and they made everyone else have a bad attitude. Had everyone scared. Think about it. All it took was those naysayers to start sowing that seed of doubt. You know, sometimes our attitude stinks because we're looking at the wrong things. We're reading the wrong things. So some of you are only going to take away, oh, I just need to change. Those things have a better attitude. I want you to write this down. There will always be giants in our lives. There will always be giants in our lives. We will always have challenges, faults, shortcomings in our lives, no matter what. See, the enemy's going to try to tell you your problems are worse than everyone else's. And you're destined for failure. Failure, no matter what. You're going to fail. Whatever you go out and try to do, you're going to fail because that's what he wants you to do. See, let me tell you, we all have problems. I don't care who you are, you've got a giant somewhere. You've had giants in the past, you're going to have giants in the future. But how are you going to face them? Are you going to try to take them on yourself? See, we all know that one person that says, Oh, if they only knew what I was going through. Oh, it was me. They just don't have a clue. But let me tell you something. Your giant to you is just as big as their giant is to them. But how are you going to face it? Are you going to face it different than they are? Are you going to let it beat you? See, the people who are able to live a happy, joyful, fulfilled, and productive life, they're the ones who are seeing the grapes on the other side of the giants because they know their Savior walks with them, they're uh, spending time with him, and he's going to help them get through it. See, some of us are going to have to start living our lives differently. We have to start seeing the grapes. We have to start seeing the promises on the other side of the roadblocks. But you know what made Caleb so great? 
He refused to believe the lie that the giants were bigger than the grapes. He kept his eyes focused, like the old Indiana Jones movies. He knew where the treasure was, and he had to overcome his giants a lot of times to get to it. But he knew there was a promise on the other side of it. He just had to stick to it. And a lot of times, we take our eyes off of it. See, the devil can delay the gift, but he cannot delay the giver. So our second point, Caleb and Joshua did not let fear determine their future. There's so many times in our lives that we let fear determine where we're going to go in our day-to-day life. And when we do that, we're trying to lay the path on our own for our future. But see, my God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I will bless you with a future filled with hope. Filled with hope. A future of success. Not failure, but of success. And not of suffering. See, when we're trusting him with our future, we're saying, I can do this. When we don't trust him, I can do it on my own. I don't need him. Think about it. When we're laying our own path because we're not trusting him and walking with him, we're saying we don't need him. See, we're all going to have those hills and valleys in our life. We're going to have the speed bumps. What have you learned from them to help you face that giant? Because he's been right there with you in the small things, but have you gave him credit for it? Because when he's there with you in the small, he's going to be in there with the big. He wants you to get to those grapes. He wants you to get to the promises on the other side. But if everything was easy and we didn't, everything was just flat road and we didn't have the detours in life, we didn't have those hills and valleys, would we lean on him? Would you be in here right now if everything was always going smooth for you? Most likely not. See, we get in our heads that we can do it on our own when things go easy. And the next thing you know, we've got that nine-foot giant sitting in front of us. Or that big obstacle. And we're like, oh, I'll face it tomorrow. I'll face it Friday. Think about it. I'll take the detour. What happens when you start taking the detour? You take your eyes off the grapes. You take your eyes off the promise. Then you start drifting away. You get further away from the promise he has for you. So I'm going to talk about one of my biggest giants. And it's my chatterbox. We all have them, but it's how we react to them. Tanya, I tell you, my chatterbox has probably been one of my biggest down players of my life. I've let it beat me up on different business adventures and different things like that. And um, a lot of times I didn't go after it because I was kind of happy what I had in my hand. I won't look in it. The promise on the other side. That chatterbox just started talking to me. So what is your chatterbox? It's the little voice in the back of your head that tries to destroy your dreams. Why are you up here? You are no pastor. No, here's something. It stands at the door of your divine destiny. Look out there. They're not even paying you any attention. Boy, and it's a relentless thing. They are thinking you are a big joke. See, the chatterbox is a black hole sucking in everything around us. See, the chatterbox is what the people had the people of Israel in fear. You have messed up now. Wow. um, See, the chatterbox always sees the giants instead of the grapes. Jason, stop while you're ahead. Oh, wow. See, the chatterbox, they are going to laugh you out of the church. The chatterbox, I told you to stop, but no, you have to keep on going. See, it's starting to work on me. I'm ready to sit down. (laughs) See, the chatterbox. Look, the deacons are over there right now texting the pastor saying, Look, the deacons are over there right now texting the pastor saying, Really? 
say, turn it off. Turn it off. I can't handle it. That's all I can handle for today. See, that's all that's got to do. It takes that one grain of doubt and makes it grow. See, a lot of times our giants, we make them out bigger than what they actually are. I'm guilty of that. And I sit back and look, and I'm like, I could, I had, I could have done that. But the devil's got my head and made me doubt it. Think about the things that you may have been able to accomplish over the years. He's prepared you for it, but you decided to take a detour around it. You'll get to that promise, but because of the path that you've tried to lay on your own, it's going to take you a little bit longer to get there. Because he's got that blessing still for you, but you've got to be willing to lean on him. You've got to be able to say, okay, God, I'm trusting you to get me through this. I cannot do it on my own. See, we all have a chatterbox. And just as soon as you turn out on Corey Road, either left or right, whichever way you may be going, it's going to start. It's going to tell you what you can't do at school, what you can't do at work, what you can't do at home. It's going to tell you what you can't do in your neighborhood. It's going to say you can't do that with your finances. You can't take your health back. It's going to start that grain of doubt, and it's going to start to grow and grow and grow. But how are you going to face it? Next thing you know, it's Saturday night. And everybody that you were planning on inviting Sunday morning, guess what you didn't do? Because it worked on you. It had you keep putting it off. Putting it off. Putting it off. So how do you stop your chatterbox? What is feeding your chatterbox? Write it down. What is feeding your chatterbox? Is it a friend, a spouse, a TV show, whatever it is, write it down. It can be more than one thing. It's your giant. It's what's stopping you from the promises. It's what's stopping you from getting those grapes. See, we have to acknowledge it to be able to conquer it. So put that picture up. How many of you remember Waldo? I used to get those highlight magazines, and I always had the Waldo in it. So how do you conquer it? You know, you come up here and you, you look and you look, and you thought you found him. After about five minutes, look, there he is. And just when you pulled it closer, it was a dog with a scarf. You had to start all over. I hated it. But see, there's two things that we can learn from Waldo to crash your chatterbox. It's proximity and duration. See, if you're not close enough to the picture, you're not going to find him, right? Same thing if we're not close enough to Jesus. And we're not spending enough time in our daily prayer life or active during worship. See, we're never going to find him if we don't have that proximity. We have to draw close to him. And to draw close to him, he's going to draw close to us. And the second, duration. Not only do we need to be close to him, we have to spend time for him. We're always saying we're busy, busy, busy. But he wasn't too busy to die on the cross for us. You have to do it day in and day out. Sometimes, quite a few times during the day. He makes time for us. Why is it so hard for us to make time for him sometimes? Because when we are up there with that giant, he's going to be there right beside us. He's going to be our strength to help us defeat it because he wants us to get our blessings on the other side. He wants us to get those grapes. He wants us to have that dream that we can never really imagine how great it's going to be. See, we need to give God more of our time, day in and day out. Just like with that picture, you got to give it time to find Waldo. I guarantee you if I said, study that picture, First one to find Waldo, if it took you an hour, I said, I got a $100 bill for you. You're going to sit there and you're going to look at it for an hour until you find Waldo, right? 
Think about it. Why is it so hard sometimes to spend that little extra time with him? He gave us the greatest blessing we'll ever receive. That one day. See, the closer we get, the more time we want to spend. The more time we spend, we'll learn to let go of what we have and trust him for what he has promised for us. You know, I still fight my giants. We're all going to fight our giants, no matter what. You know, while all, all eyes closed, when you can say, Pastor Jason, I'm ready to see my grapes. I'm ready to stop seeing giants and being denied my blessings. How many of you like that? So how many of you say, I'm ready to leave the giants I've wrote down this morning. I'm ready to leave them in my rearview mirror because I know God's going to help me defeat each and everything that's going to come up against me. He's going to help me get past the roadblocks in my life. He's going to keep me on the right path. He's going to keep me going straight and forward. The obstacles are going to no longer hold you back. Are you ready to leave your giants behind this morning? Are you ready to leave the naysayers behind? Because what they say does not even come close to what he has promised for us on the other side. If that's, this morning we're going to end a little bit different. We're going to end up down here. Because the altar is representing your grapes this morning. This is where your grapes are. Your giants are on that piece of paper you wrote down. You're going to leave them in your seat because you're leaving them. You're leaving them behind. You're going to come forward this morning saying, I'm ready to move forward this year. I'm ready to move forward by growing closer to my Heavenly Father because I'm ready for the blessings He has for me. So if that's you, I want you to come forward this morning. Come and get your grapes. Leave your giants behind. This is the way we'll finish out this morning because your neighbor, they got giants. They may come up here and you're like, oh, well, they, they must have a big giant. No, your, your giant is just as big as theirs, and it's time to leave them behind. So at any time, you make your way up here. If you're ready to leave it behind, the past is past. This church is moving forward. We're moving forward this year. We're taking that step forward, and that's all it takes is a step to leave it all behind. To move forward, it takes a step. This church is moving forward. We're going to move forward together. We're all leaving our giants this morning together as a family. Love has called my name. And I've been born again into your family. Oh, your blood flows through.
Cause I am surrounded by the arms of a father. And I am surrounded by songs of deliverance. We've been liberated Come on, sing it from our bondage. sing our freedom every voice we're free come on over your life sing it as loud as you can Split the sea, yeah. you split the sea so I could walk right through. My fears were drowned in perfect love, and you rescued me so I could stand and sing. defeat me because I am a child of God. No battle can turn me because I am a child of God. No mountain can stop me because I am a child of God. Oh yes I am a child. God has delivered you from something this morning, which I believe that He has, it's only appropriate that we give Him praise for that. Amen? How many of you have overcome in the name of Jesus Christ? That sounds like God has done something. Amen? Well, let's give Him some praise this morning. Amen? God who always causes us to triumph in his name. Thanks be to God who always causes us to win. Yeah. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in his name. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Come on, let's give him some praise. We have overcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overcome by the power of 
All we have to do is look up and you're right there helping us face everything that comes against us, Lord. Lord, I pray a hedge of protection around each and every one as they leave here today and keep them safe, Lord. Do not let that chatterbox start on them this week, Lord. They know they can defeat that chatterbox, but they're going to be growing closer to you as we go forward in 2019. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Hey, we've got pizza with the pastors. If you're new, we'd love to have you over here in the fellowship hall.